did say in the previous video, you'll probably see me sat here in the next one wearing a Baxi shirt. And guess what? I came through and we won. <laughs> I've never lost while... Uh, oh, sorry. So we've never lost while I've worn this shirt. So it must be a lucky shirt. Anyways, folks, welcome back to Match Day Report. The microphone's still broken, so we're uh, having to improvise with how I'm keeping it in place. So if it sounds... Um, if it sounds poor, then just know I am doing my very best to keep it in a position where it does not sound poor. Anyways... The famous Preston North End versus Stoke Chitty. Let's uh, get up these stats and let's discuss, shall we? All right, so getting into things. So after a delayed kickoff, the first half had us looking good for the first 10 or so minutes, but after that, we certainly dropped off, and that's an understatement. Naturally, or should say normally, games like this either end with us losing badly or winning 1-0. Hmm. Anyways, uh, Stoke had 12 shots in the first half, if I can remember that correctly. Um... Well, actually, no, this can't be right because this has three shots on target. At half time, it said there was four on target. So unless it was three and it was counted wrong in the first half, I'm not too sure. But anyways, they had a lot of shots in the first half. Let's put it that way. We had like three with none on target. So it, it looked concerning at first. It looked like they were just trying to fire away and we weren't. And you know what they say. You just you smack the ball, it goes anywhere. So the second half was pretty dry until the last 20 minutes where the action began to pick up a little bit more. Woodman had to make a few good saves and we didn't challenge their keeper at all until the last 15 minutes. After all this crappy play, Chad near post camping pairs off as we steal the three in the closing minutes. And for anybody wondering what that garbage is on that child's shirt, um, we just, just note that there are multiple different teams supported in this household and they're all trying to drum one into his head. But based on the look of the bedroom, I think he's picked his favourite, but they will keep trying. Anyways, so uh, just to brief these stats for a minute. It's another game where we've had the least possession and we've won. It's a very common theme at this point. Uh, nine shots, two on target, again with a two on target. This, I think our shots are identical to the last two games. Um, so we, just, we weren't the attacking team, to be honest. But we, for once, were the team with the least fouls, which is insane. Uh, four cards each. Uh, we had two offsides to the three and we had the most corners um, and like I said earlier games where we normally start like Firing on all cylinders in the first ten minutes. We either win one nil or we lose so um, Yeah, nice to see that's keeping up um, In terms of who we played this time. I'm gonna go over quickly. Uh, we, we started the RB um, Which is something that uh, many people I saw complaining about saying that oh he, he's this and he's this uh, you can't be writing somebody off as soon as you know you see them on the team sheet. You gotta let them show what they can do. Yeah, he had a stinker at Blackpool and he had a stinker elsewhere, but when he was up and down this side the other day, I thought there's some potential in this lad. And look at him now. He, he I think, I think Diaby was man of the match. If you disagree with me, then I don't care. Diaby was the man of the match for me. Right, Woodman seven, uh, Diaby seven, Lindsay seven. So uh, and Hughes a six. We're just going over our player ratings really quickly. Uh, I don't want to make this too convoluted all long, so I'll brief this section. Um, so, yeah, I can pretty much agree with this. Woodman was... He had a, f he had a few um, few good saves here and there. I do think his positioning could have been a bit better and his reactions a little bit better as well because of a few unnecessary things he did. Um, so that needs to be changed. Just But, just you know, just work on that. Um, yeah, DRB7. I'd, probably, I'd maybe even give him an 8. You know, it, it, was, it was really, really good. It was all it was all around the pitch. He made you know he ran those hard yards. He, he did the tackles when they were appropriate. Never lost his man. He were, he were brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Completely different player to what we saw a few weeks ago. Uh, Lindsay a seven, which is pretty much his average at this rate, isn't it? it? You can't just you can't say anything else. Not too special, but all the effort. And then Husey a six. They're good to have him back in the side. I agree. Um, uh, and that he didn't do a massive amount. For the for the team, but I suppose anything's better than nothing at this rate. Uh, well, you know we're trying to stay in the fight after all. Brown a seven. I really don't agree with that personally. Uh, grafted away at right wing back did a good job. Couldn't fault his application or endeavour. Sent in the corner for Evans to head home. He, yeah, the corners were fine enough. That was the strategy to send them to the near post for Evans to head them home like that. That was the idea, and it did pay off eventually, quite luckily. But I don't think all game he was too great towards the end when he was making his runs up and down that was good because he carried the ball a little bit but other than that when he was going down all the time when he had stinking moments he started to fall down as well he, he, he was very self-conscious during the game by the looks of it um, 
but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think he was all that fantastic. I'd maybe give him a six or a five, but the assist do, does not boost it that much for me because again, that was the idea. It was whether or not he could send it in right and can Evans head it in, which of course that clicked in the end. But for the rest of the game, when he's around that middle of the pitch area and whatnot, he, he wasn't the best to be honest. Uh, White minus six. I didn't see him too much in all honesty, so I can't really uh, comment on that. Uh, McCannon eight. Yep, good to see him back. Uh, buzzed around all game was a nuisance for Stoke. Do, 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 do you want to crunkle that crisp packet anymore? Uh, Alvaro a five, which is a bit of a strange one considering he held the ball for quite a lot of the match, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I can agree. He, he tried to provide the spark here and there, and he kept his head high despite a few funny moments. But yeah, I don't know. You were a bit strange today, Alvaro. He, you've got he, he did his job, but not to the extent we know he can do. Uh, Johnson and eight, yeah, fair enough. Started the game well, picking up pockets of space. Uh, just to ball his ball, what it could be. Yeah, of course, it, it, like, just like Blackburn, it was another great game for him. All oh, right, I had to take a minute to read that then to actually understand what it's saying. I'm half asleep, but like I've got to go to work in an hour. Uh, chances were at a premium, but his grit and determination was not. So, yeah, the, the, the chances were few and far between, but he was always there. He always wanted to try and pick something out of them. And, and yeah, that's fair. I, I think Evans is probably our best player over the last couple of weeks, so that's fair enough. Uh, Reese was forced off after 23 minutes. An ankle injury he was holding his knee, was he not? Uh, a real shame as he had sighted brightly. Uh, yeah, that's fair. And then Woodburn a six. Uh, so a goal bound volley, which was a very good volley, by the way. Uh, but it was a good save as well. And then Ledson not applicable because he literally came on for 30 seconds. Uh, just to waste a bit more time so yeah that's fine that's fair enough I think they're relatively accurate uh, in terms of what Super Ryan thinks he thinks uh, the performance was just all about character which is not everything a performance should be uh, we've had a tough two weeks uh, let's not kid ourselves that's what the championship brings I thought we were fantastic in everything we did what are you smoking uh, we've had a few injuries a bit of bad luck and sometimes you need that little bit of resilience in the group i told the group beforehand that tough times don't last tough people do that's a that's good motivation actually and that's what we've got in abundance so yeah fair play loads of characters some good football but the football is irrelevant the three points is the main thing well it's not irrelevant is it because if we can't exactly carry over a winning performance and that's why we lose the points so yes the performance is important on the effort and endeavor everything we needed bambo coming in having not played for a while we did some work with him this week and when you're losing players it's tough uh, but everyone knows their jobs where you have to stick with your job I've said it numerous times we were a good team oh. people may have been saying it I had nil nil written all over it which I actually did but we had the fire in our belly to keep going and get the goal because we felt it if we could keep the back door shut there'd be opportunities for us it was a well worked corner and a great idea from Chedwin the, the West Brom game was one of our highest for, for the season believe it or not in terms of total distance covered I think today will be two uh, but when you come to places like Stoke, you have to put those shifts in. We've got good players, but for us, we've got to do what we can do, and working hard is a priority. The winning goal, it epitomises the group. When you have people like Ched, who's willing to run the hard yards, it sets examples, and that is what he's doing, setting examples, because sometimes we can't play pretty football or the brand we want, so we have to spin it in behind at times. I thought we played some decent stuff today on top, the top of my head, but the resilience of the character show on Ched leads from the front. Yeah, yeah, he should wear that armband of, instead of brown, to be honest. Uh, on Ched, exactly, uh, that's what he does, and fair play to Ched, the credit goes to him. We've put him in the team, and he's battling away. Sometimes we've gone too long to him, uh, and he was up against a top-class centre-half in Suter today. He got booked for elbowing him in the nose early on, and then he saw sort of walking on thin ass. Ass? Ice? Jesus Christ. He can't then do too much to him, so that's uh, what good... So that was good for us, but in terms of Ched, his belief, desire, commitment, different class. And now he's scoring goals with all of that. Uh, on winning, I can't read, on matching Stoke City in the battle. Uh, we shouldn't be competing with Stoke, they are bigger and better and shouldn't be where they are. Okay, that is no disrespect to Neil or anyone there, but they are a big club as we all know. So for us to come to these tough places and put in a performance that way, and a win game of football the way we did, it's pleasing to see. Uh, but we can't get too carried away with and the lads know that we've had to put the work in every hour that God sends to make sure we've put it right So we just need to be level-headed a bit keep going on our business and keep winning the games of football To come here compete is one of the things you have to do first and foremost uh, On Reese and Woodburn 
Uh, I'm not sure if it affected us in terms of the performance or helped us, I don't know. Uh, Woodburn, uh, what he did do was press from every angle he could. I've said he's one of the best pressers and Emil is one of the best at running in behind. Uh, we were gutted to lose Emil and we have to see how he is, but when you've got that change straight away, Ben can drop into little pockets. Uh, and you can see him winning the ball back behind defenders and midfielders. He's good at that, so I think it certainly helped us. You miss your striker, Emil, who can get really in behind and had started the game good, hold the ball up well. But things happen for a reason, don't they? Well, maybe not in this situation. We just asked Ben to make some channel runs because we wanted to get them turning in some areas, which we did. Ben made loads of good runs. If anyone was coming short, it was going to be Chad. Uh, and we'd been using Ben's uh, bit of pace. Uh, because he's fast, Ben, when he gets going, he's not slow. We asked him to do a bit of work from behind and just covered out, I will see, but it will have been big. Uh, on the four changes to the team, we only have a small squad. Yeah, very small squad. But the group of players work on a daily basis so that they know the job when called upon. What are you doing? DJ was back in the team and fantastic. I thought we need to see that from DJ on a regular basis, which I am asking for him and we're chatting all the time to get that. McCann has come in uh, from timeout and Hu from timeout and Husey came back into the fold. Uh, we didn't want to rush him last week. We got 90 minutes out of him. We may have to shut him down for a few days. Potsy struggling with a foot injury. Oh, okay, so that's, that might be why he didn't come on. Uh, and Story was struggling with a tight muscle, so we had to make changes. But fair play to the group for going in there performing. On the win celebration, yeah, Master, the stadium officer came to me before the game and said we might have to delay the game because your fans are stuck in traffic. I said, no, you you won't might have to, you will have to because they are us, they are with us supporting us and they have been a tough couple of weeks for themselves. Uh, we know that, but let's not get frustrated and let's get behind the group like they did today. It's always nice when you can send them on uh, with a 90 minutes winner. It's not always going to be pretty. I know there'll be a number of fans who want us to stake a claim for the top six, but it's tough. Well, yeah. If we would have, if we couldn't, if we didn't have those three wins on the bounce, we'd still be there, to be honest. But the three losses, sorry. If there were three wins or a few draws, we'd still be there. Uh, we'll hopefully get a bit uh, of hope in January to push us on. Um, it's about the next game for me and the players. We'll see where it takes us. Yeah. Okay. On DRB, he will take, he will take confidence. Uh, me and Bamboada go the conversation after West Brom. It is difficult sometimes, and it's the same for Patrick when the back lads have been brilliant. It's tough to go in and he understands that he's got to wait for his opportunities. I've chucked him on the right wing, uh, right wing back and up front because he can cause a bit of chaos because of his size. That's very true and people who laugh at it because of that is ridiculous. You don't understand the plan. The plan is to just get the biggest man up there, the most physical lad up there and cause all, all the trouble you can. Um, he's great at it, uh, but he's got some qualities. We simplify the game for him today, find Brownie when you can, step in when you can, find the yellow shirt when you can and defend solid and he did that. I don't think we need to be treating him like um, an incompetent fool, but that's one way of putting it, um, and he certainly did that. So yeah, brilliant stuff there. Uh, I just when he says the performance was brilliant, I don't think it was. There was, a, there was a, quite a lot of moments where we could have done much better. I think it was pretty shit football from both of us, to be honest. But we move. Uh, so the points to make was the performance for the most game was poor. Cher and Bambo seemed to be the only ones that tried uh, majority of the time. Bambo was definitely man of the match. Uh, Ched's near post tactic paired off. Uh, it was a big win for us as well, shifting us from 15th back to 10th. Uh, and of course, up, around, up higher on the table, things are getting a bit scrappier as well, so uh, anything can change in the, in the coming weeks. The performance needs to be built upon, and then Reese leaving early with an injury needs to be checked. Um, three pros, I've got the, uh, the big three points. Uh, Bamboo's brilliant display, and Evan's great form continues, which is the only thing saving us the points at the minute. And then the cons, we only had two shots on target again. The performance still wasn't fantastic. We do need some more motivation on the pitch. Off the pitch motivation is fine, but when they get on that pitch, it's almost as if the brain freezes. Need We need that motivation back. Um, and the attacking efforts weren't great, to be honest. Uh, different class. Ryan, Lo Ryan Lowe shows key to Preston North End's win at Stoke is different class Evans is praised. He is a different class because the way he plays is so cathartic and bombastic as a, as a forward and a number nine in that in the way that he plays. But it, it clearly works. He's doing something right if he's able to score these goals, hold this ball and do this and do that. That's that's what I mean. It's it's definitely a fantastic thing for Chad. Uh, and I hope it continues because if it doesn't, we are getting relegated. <laughs> so so it, it, the score needs to continue. Uh, and hopefully we can either survive or go up to only two options survive or go up so yeah that is yeah well, that, well, that's
Well done, Jeff. He's hench. He is hench. Footballers are in great condition. And if you want to be a footballer just like Super Chadwin, you got to stop eating all them crisps. Look at that bear. He's, he's pressing his bear. It looks like fucking can't stand, does it? No. Yeah, but... Anywho, um, I suppose I better sign off because I've got myself only half an hour left to get ready before I have to set off. So um, thank you all for tuning in. Brilliant day, brilliant scenes, of course. Um, hopefully we can uh, continue this and make things better because it's, it's a great start. It's a great way to improve upon what we did against West Brom. But at the same time, if this is going to be something we introduce for a game and abandon and nothing else it gets better from here, then it's pointless. So, yeah, we, we've, we've got we've to build upon this uh, because otherwise we are pretty fucked. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for listening in once more. Um, our next match is Huddersfield in the Carabao Cup. Seven, no, the seven, FA Cup, sorry. The 7th of Saturday, January. Yep, Saturday. So I'll, I'll cover that, I suppose, why not? We'll probably get out. We never usually do well in the FA Cup, and it's Huddersfield again at home, of all places. So um, too, many ho- times. too many times. So my hopes aren't high, to be honest. For, for My hopes aren't high, to be honest, but... It is what it is. As long as we win the le- get get a good run in the league, sorry. If our league run stays well, then the FA Cup doesn't bother me because let's be honest, we're not winning the FA Cup with Premier League teams in there. But but yeah, once more, I shall see you all at the weekend.